Greetings in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm Elder Kelvin Graves, and you are now in tune with our Wins video. And for more videos like this, please visit us at ChristWins.org. Not only do we have our other videos there, but we do have a radio show and also a television program to include other information that's vital for your spiritual growth. So please tune in again at ChristWins.org. And today's video is going to be on unsettled or the unsettling of the word. And what we're dealing with is the fact that many today are attempting to disrupt scripture in order to live and do certain things that God does not condone. A lot of times when people are misled or led astray, it's not because they're told not to listen to the Bible, but it's a misinterpretation of Scripture. The Bible says this, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who needs not be ashamed, but rightly divides the word of truth. Which means, without the studying, there can be wrongly division of what God is saying. And we've had uh, many things throughout our history based on misinterpretation of scripture, i.e. Uh, racism, slavery, especially uh, the slavery that was uh, promoted and executed in um, the Americas uh, for about 400 years. It was based on misinterpretation of scripture and um, white men using the Bible against black people and not only that but not letting them learn to read so they can read for themselves what it actually said and misinterpreting scripture like the curse of Ham meant that black people were cursed and just different things like that that have happened over the years that have caused people to uh, be servants or slaves to others not just in the physical sense of actual slavery but in the spiritual sense of being subservient to somebody and doing what they want based on bad scripture every um, cult you can think of from a David Koresh to um, Jim Jones these guys use scripture and many times it could have been uh, they used the right things at first but when they became self-absorbed or they began to covet uh, what they saw the power of this Bible brings they began to get off track and Satan was able to infiltrate their doctrines the Bible says in the last days many will still give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils it also says that Satan can transform himself into an angel of life no wonder that he can transform his ministers into ministers of righteousness so there are many many examples of people who have been unsettled in their walk with the Lord um, by virtue of someone who used this Bible as a weapon not against unrighteousness or evil but against people to control them they recently had a, a movie that was made and the premise of the movie was there was only one Bible left and there was an evil guy who knew that if he could get the Bible he could control folk better than with a gun and that was that's a powerful statement so we're going to talk about a few things in this lesson or this 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 video that you need to understand so that you can begin to recalibrate your walk because many people are being led astray and I got some other things on the site to deal with Gnostic beliefs and those kinds of things but I'm going to give you a few examples of the unsettling of the word so that you can get back on track with what the Bible says because for one if you only get what you get because of what somebody else says and you never interact with God and what I mean by virtue of prayer or actually reading the word then you would never know and then there's really really no freedom for God to speak to you succinctly through his word if you don't read it yourself and I was telling my family the other day that there's a lot of things going on in the body of Christ and what God has to do now when there's a lot of foolishness is still speak with that still small voice which means you know, it's like Moses upset, he hits the rock instead of speaking. God told him one way to do it, he didn't do it that way, but the water still flowed. God is still flowing into people who are succinctly looking for him. Jesus was in a crowd of people who were touching him and, and, and thronging him. And the Bible says that when he walked, he said, who touched me? And the disciple says, all these people, Master, you asked who touched you. But he said, no matter how many people are in this group, everybody ain't here for me. 
and everybody that touches me is not getting anything from me because they must approach me with faith. So actually, the woman with the issue of blood displayed in a crowd that there was a power that can be released for those who sincerely seek him and who diligently go towards him with faith. But you can't do that if you don't know what this word says. So we're going to start out with just a few examples, and I'm going to give you the places where you can actually go reference them. first one is Leviticus 18 and 22. The Bible says this, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. I've actually heard preachers who took this scripture and said, Don't worry about what Leviticus says. Not even mention it and then convince people that homosexuality is condoned by God. If not, no other part of the Bible ever talked about it, Leviticus 18 and 22 says, Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. And the assumption from the scripture would be, a woman should not lay with another woman as she lays with a man. And it is crucial that you understand that that is not condoned. Now, this is not hate to tell somebody what the Bible says because there are scriptures against all unrighteousness in there that targets people against certain activities. And I'm going to go into them. So it ain't personal. So to create a culture that says we have to uh, protect ourselves because of the hate is foolishness because there are so many other things in society that are unrighteous based on God's standards that have not been culturized but just have not been given a light yet for people to say that this is okay too, i.e. pedophilia. And people may say, well, child molestation would never be. If you read scripture and you understand the evolution of unrighteousness throughout history, there's always been a place where children were abused, sacrificed to false gods, orgy manipulated, and even in today, secret societies, many of them, many of them in their doctrine is, is the actual molestation or raping of children in order to control them. Now, you may say, that sounds crazy. Study to show yourself approved, and you'll get the information that you need. But it's crucial. You can't change that. So that means that we have to come up to what the word says. Because a man that's driven by lust to be with another a man is the same is in the same state as another man that's being driven by lust for a woman. Now, conditionally, it's it's better for you to lay with a woman than with a man. But this is the another scripture that deals with that. First Corinthians five, one through six. It is reported commonly that there's fornication among you, and such fornication is not as much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. Dude in the church sleeping with his father's wife. Now you can say that's his mama. I don't know. It could be his stepmama. God is saying in this scripture through Paul, it's wrong. It's fornication. This is a man and a woman. It's wrong. It ain't got nothing to do with 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 you saying, uh, well, this is how I feel. This no, it's not right. Verse 2, and ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that have done this deed might be taken away from you. People now are coming up with everybody's sad story every week of how they fell and did this dumb stuff. But now it's creating a culture that this particular thing is okay because God understands your heart. See, if you're struggling with homosexuality, you're struggling with fornication, you're struggling with adultery, you're in the same place. You have a stronghold that needs to be broke. And this is the deal. The more power you got on your side, the bigger the stronghold. Homosexuality, homosexuals in general, have a platform now. So they have major spiritual wickedness in high places that reinforces that stance. So on a lower level, those demons have become extremely emboldened with their stance and their right to be what they want. Same arrogance that was in Sodom and Gomorrah. This is all Bible. Watch this, verse 3. For verily... I am absent in the body, but present in spirit. I have judged already as though I were present concerning him that have done this deed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together and, and in my spirit, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Bottom line, I don't care what lifestyle you in, God's intent is for to save you before this thing is over with. We weren't supposed to be just living with this stuff as if it was normal. Watch this next verse. Your glorying is not good. Know ye not that a little, little leaven will leaven the whole lump? You're going to damage your kids. This stuff that these adults are condoning and saying is okay, your kids are listening. 
in church. They listening to all this and they hearing all these testimonies and they saying, oh, wow, if she can shout, dance, speak in tongues and do all that and then still live like that and then give a testimony like that and it's every week and then everybody follows in that steps where I can do the same thing. The leaven leavens the whole lump. And then in some places, the bad examples are just thrown up front as being the way that this is because we all have sinned and fallen short. That statement is true, but that's not what you're supposed to promote. And this is crucial. And that's powerful in that scripture that you see that. Watch this. Another part of the scripture. 1 Corinthians 5 and 9. I wrote unto you an epistle not to accompany with fornicators. Now people are, are tripping. You ain't supposed to hang out with nobody. Everybody is falling short. But this is Paul's intent of the scripture. Watch this. Verse 10. Yet not all together with the fornicators of this world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with the idolaters, for then ye must need out of the world. See, he expands it. I told you all unrighteousness is sin. It's not one thing with God, but things that come up before him. Like Sodom and Gomorrah's sin came up before him. So he had to deal with it. It came up because a stronghold was built and them devils was just going, getting besides themselves. These things, anything that, any unrighteousness that's backed by a group of people, glory to God, it goes up before them in Revelation. It's like the Tower of Babel. Tower of Babel was built and he said if they do this, nothing that they want to do. I got to scramble their language because anything they want to do, they, they, they won't be withheld from them because of their unity. So anytime we unify around an unrighteous sin, it goes up into the nostrils of God. And then he calls for those that are walking with him to address these issues. But watch this. Watch this next part of the verse. But now I've written unto you not to, to keep company if any man that is called a brother be a fornicator. He's specifically talking about if me and you say we Christians, but the stuff that you do in your lifestyle, fornicating, covetousness, idolatry, a railer, a drunkard, or extortioner, with such not to even eat. What he's saying is if you say that you're a Christian, and you've been taught that it's okay to do this kind of stuff, then fellowship with them because they're going to live in the whole lump. Folk in the world who are doing this, my message ain't even about anything particular other than you need the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Because if I focus on the Christ, there may be other issues in your heart that drive you to drink or fornicate that need to be healed by him and then that stuff will fall away. But if the hidden pain that that the stuff in you that's not dealt with you'll never come so for me to deal with you based on any particular thing if you in the world really doesn't cut it because all you need is Jesus and if I can't convey that then we lost and that's why this doctrine now about don't use his name and it ain't about Christ because he knows he can save you because all unrighteousness is sin but we got to be able to preach that. But people who know him, who by bad teaching are learning that it is okay to do this stuff, you become detrimental to the body. Because the Bible says it even like this. Paul was teaching, he said, if an elder, being an elder, if you do stuff in front of folk that don't know what you know, it's going to entice them to sin. He was talking about eating food, sacrifice to idols. He says, I know it ain't no power in the idol, but a person that don't know what I know, if they see me do it, they'll copy my behavior without my knowledge. Now they're going to become a servant of Satan. Why? Because in their flesh is going to appeal to the sin part because of their lack of knowledge of God. You've got to understand that. So it's big. you got to deal with that. So, it ain't just homosexuals, it's fornication, it's everything. And everybody got to struggle in the offense. And basically, because of we've been born in sin, the shed been iniquity, and then reinforced by the different things that are in the world. You got something you're dealing with, but you ain't supposed to rejoice in iniquity. And it ain't supposed to be something that you're supposed to own. Check this other scripture out. Ecclesiastes 5, Ecclesiastes 5 and 10. It says, He that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver. No, he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. People are being taught that their problems are going to be solved if they give so that they can prosper and become rich. Everybody ain't going to become rich for one. And then if, they, if you're constantly seeking to the American dream gospel, you ain't going to be satisfied because if you seek after that and that's your main goal, you won't be satisfied when you get it. That's why most people who pursue it keep going and they get overtaken. And Peter was told, he says, don't be guilty of filthy lucre, but, but preach of a ready mind. Don't serve the people from your heart. Don't serve them because of an incentive or something that you're getting. Because other than that, what Satan would do 
The love of money is at the root of all evil. When you start seeking it, he's going to pull that carrot far, farther away, and you subject to compromise to keep getting that closer to that carrot. So it's crucial that you understand that, that abundance and increase it won't satisfy you. He says, he says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and he will give you rest. You have to rest in him. Paul said it like this, in all states I find contentment. So even at the worst state, you're supposed to find contentment because seeking after things, they won't fulfill you. God is the only one that can do that. Another scripture, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, Every man according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. People are being manipulated out of their money. They made, they made to give under guilt and out of necessity and grudgingly against what they want to do because they begin to convince that God is going to kill them if they don't. If they miss paying tithes or they miss doing this, that God is going to do something to them. God works on principles. They're principles. Well, you're going to reap what you sow. If you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But the position of your heart needs to always be cheerful because that is how he's going to bless you. Other than that, people are going to be spiritually raped by folk who do not quote this scripture or who misinterpret it to get people to do what they want them to do. Those are just a few samples of the unsettling of God's word that's going on in the world now. Don't be hoodwinked and don't be sidetracked by this stuff. Study these scriptures, read this stuff for yourself, and ask God to open up your heart and marinate in you and give you a vision and, 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 and a, um, a clear direction of what you need to be, what you need to be and what you need to be doing. And that's big. He can forgive you for anything and cleanse you from anything. But you, if you don't hear that, then you'll settle for, for the worst kind of behaviors. And it's going to damage our next generation. And we won't, we won't have a gospel. We'll have a, a, some other. We'll have actually uh, the, the formation of the beast system within our congregation and within people. And it goes right along with the Antichrist agenda. And with that said, I want to say God bless you. And we appreciate you listening. And again, if you want to get more of our wins videos, visit us at ChristWins.org. And with that said, we want to say thank you and God bless. And we'll see you on the next time. Bye-bye.